Hey, today I want to give you a couple of insights and have a discussion around how to build a strong restoration company in 2023. It's a very complicated landscape for all business, all society. And I want to give you a couple of tips that might help you increase or improve your scalability and growth and just enjoying your company. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. Hey, welcome back. Clark Brown here with Disaster Podcast. Really good to see you and be having another podcast. We actually took a couple of weeks off of, of creating and filming some podcasts because we're working on a few big things, and I can tell you about that in just a moment. Um, working on a few big things, and I can tell you about that in just a moment. Um, don't think this is easy. Um, I, I'll, I will tell you this morning driving in, to the studio, uh, I have another podcast scheduled uh, with a guest, and that's here in, in a couple of hours. I was going to work on that a little bit and do some more research and whatnot. But over the last couple of days and in, in, in this week and up to yesterday, I've had a lot of conversations with restorers that have reached out, having some struggles, clients that I already deal with or something like that. And there are a couple of <clears throat> common themes and things that I find myself talking about and that they realize. And I wanted to share some of those with you today. Um, but, uh, you know, so this one is, is as much as you're supposed to outline things, this one's going to be kind of just casual. But the cool thing is it's my damn co podcast and I can do it if I want to, right? No, but uh, I'm going to try to keep this thing from being all over where, everywhere. I've got kind of like three general areas that I think that if, if we have a discussion and if you really focus on them, they might help you get through the hardships. Now, I'm not an idiot and I'm aware that podcasts and online videos, everyone's trying to tell you what you need to do. The only person that can really help you is you. But sometimes being told and reminded and, and looking at things through another lens by someone that you might generally trust, like, or understand, uh, that can make a real difference. I know that I learned that way. So uh, before we get started, I wanted to tell you a few things and reasons why I, I've been uh, absent with the podcast for three to four weeks. Uh, it's been a little bit of a stretch here, but um, I, I just had deadlines in the company. You know, you have to look at your priorities, you have to look at your resources, and how many people you have to do things, and some things just come before. Uh, we have a business retreat that we've been planning, promoting, and getting put together, and that's going to be June 18th through the 14th, and that includes some travel days in Lake Whitefish, Montana. This is in the upper northwest corner of Montana near Glacier. It is so beautiful in the summer. It's it's beautiful year round to me, but in the summer, all the activities are open. You can you can canoe, you can hike, you can do the river. There's a lot of lot more things to do during the summer, and it's it's not hot there. So we're doing a four day um, four day workshop, but it's really just it's really two days of not even the entire day. It's two days of business planning and executive coaching over a couple of subjects. The agenda's on the link. We include meals. The lodging is included. It's a beautiful place at the Firebrand Hotel. There's a spa there, so we're recommending everyone to bring spouses. So if your wife or your husband want to uh, come with you, there's going to be a plenty of time every day to do other things. And then Saturday, the, the day before you travel home, is a free day if you want to to spend the whole day. And then we have a cocktail hour Saturday night before everybody leaves and kind of like a call to action on how we finish up 2023. So check that out. See if it's something that fits for you or someone you know. We It's very small. 
We're going to have less than 15 people probably as we're keeping it very intimate. It's not a big space. And we'd like to have a lot of time that we can do one-on-ones and, and just not have a big, crazy, chaotic thing. The other thing that we've been building and working on is what we call the Restoration Business Academy. This has been what we've been working on for years. Uh, I won't go into real a whole lot of details. I'll make a whole different uh, podcast about that. But we're really just, I can't even express how excited we are at what this is and what it will become even more of. And it's it's a membership. Uh, lots and lots and lots of people that we talk to and want to coach are too small, too busy, uh, just working in the business, don't have a lot of cash flow, but they deserve great education. Well, Restoration Business Academy is an online platform that provides live coaching access to us uh, through the, the community, we'll have, again, monthly you know, live one-on-one sessions, which will be recorded. You can watch them later. Courses we'll have in there, lessons, lots of downloads around all kinds of things, uh, you know, download sheets and PDFs, worksheets, estimating software, blah, 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 just tons of things. Uh, some affiliates will eventually have some other educators come in. We call it the Academy because it's going to be like a – university uh we'll have some people come in with specific areas around the things that you know a lot of people need getting leads and hr and your accounting and your numbers and stuff like that so it'd be really really exciting 97 dollars a month no contract pay as you go but with as much stuff that's going to be dropped in there with the next two years you're going to want to stay involved so check that out at restorationbusiness.academy link is down in the description and then the last thing I've been working on strongly or, and a lot is our, our next actually signature course, the client onboarding, how, how you should be working through a specific organized way to onboard your client so that we can avoid a lot of the problems that we have with their, the carrier interaction and interference and customer not being clear on expectations and things like that. You're really going to love this course. Uh, before I get started, I want to shout out to a company that we work with in Hawaii called EcoClean. They sent me this book. I can't say the name of it. <laughs> I'm sorry. It's Kamahama Mea. That person was the ruler and king in Hawaii. And um, this is a story about him. The reason I'm bringing it up because culture, this company EcoClean in Hawaii has an amazing culture. I'm talking about people first before profits. Uh, they don't let anybody work a whole lot of overtime and make sure they have enough people on staff. Everybody in the team is aligned. The salespeople know they have to keep enough leads coming in to support it. But um, the owners, both the owners, want to make sure everybody has time for family and, and fun. I mean, they listen, they, they surf, and they do jujitsu and race cars and stuff like that. Everyone there has a hobby and a passion outside of work, and they make sure they leave space for that. It's a great culture. Them sending me this book is just trying to tell me a little, teach me a little bit more about the Hawaii lifestyle, which lends to what we just talked about. What are we going to talk about today in the title you saw? How I think you need to change a few things or focus on a few things to grow a really strong restoration disaster cleanup company in 2023. Uh, I, I would say every year is probably a little different and has new challenges. 2023 is no different. It has been something else. And um, I see a lot of things throughout conversations, coaching clients, masterminds, the forums or whatever. And, and I, it's easy when you're not in the middle of it with outside fresh eyes to see it, and, and I wanted to bring some of those to you. Some of it, or if not all of it, are going to be things you, you really already know. You're just not doing them. You haven't built the habits, and that's what be, building a business is about, building habits. Topic number one, idea number one, discussion number one is about burying distractions. And this is something that we all struggle with. This guy as well. I am easily distracted because I'm easily impressed by things. I draw new ideas. Uh, I, I solidify existing ideas. I do homework on a lot of different things. And 
the internet is a big one. Um, we want to talk about distractions, though. We want to talk about uh, your your phone, your smartphone, your tablet, your computer. Everything is designed, engineered to distract you. Other entities, other people, other companies, other products want your attention because your attention is now the commodity. They want to buy something, they use their service or or, or something, uh, TikTok videos. They run ads. They don't even care if you buy from them. They just want the, the ads that pop up. Those people want to you to see them and buy those. Whatever it is you're into, if you are looking at frogs, you're going to see stuff about frogs. Those are distractions, and distractions are keeping you away from doing the things in your business that you need to do. You probably the things that you want to do and you set out goals and you're not getting to them or they're taking a lot longer to get there for this. So distractions, let me show you on my phone. I have simplified no apps on my screen, turned off all my notifications. Um, I check my emails at a certain time of day. I'm very, uh, strict about when I check emails. That's usually at the end of the day. Uh, I've turned off notifications and I keep all the distractions off my phone. I've learned to use focus mode uh, in Apple. I don't know if, if Android or Google phones or whatever have that, but you can focus where only certain people, but are you going to miss something? Maybe. And I think that's the next part of the distraction. You stop and start so many times that you are in firefighter mode all day. And I think that is a big problem. Uh, it, it's probably employees calling and asking a million questions. They're probably asking questions that training would take care of, that permission and delegation would take care of. Hold your people accountable. Tell them what their outcome needs to be, what the expectations of the results are and why what the goal is and how what they're about to do it's going to meet the goal and let them do it. They don't need to call you and ask you every little question. Tell them just to do their best and you'll look at the situation when you're finished. You'll you'll look at it together. You'll coach them because you as an owner, if you are an owner or leader of this company and you manage any people, your job is not really to be a worker. If you are a working manager, that position is doomed. Your job is to coach people. So stop the distractions. The layers down are you're getting distracted by people calling you all the time. Why are they calling? But if they just are going, and it could be that they just not, maybe you're not a good trainer. It, it, it happens. Maybe you don't know how to properly train people. Maybe you just think that nobody else can do it as good as you, and therefore you do it yourself. I could go on and on and on. I hear it all. But I promise you, you have good people on your team. If you don't, then you have a hiring problem, and that's an entirely different discussion. Hire people that are competent. They don't have to have experience. Pay them well. Oh, we can't hire people now. Hire them well. But turn off the distractions. Set up times where you have a closed door in one to two hours or three hours that you just work on something, do writing, create, plan, knock out a problem, go through your bank account, go through your QuickBooks and look at your P&L, meet with a, a coach, whatever you do. Make time for the most important things for you because if you are doing what everybody else in the company does, there's no one leading the ship. There's no captain. There's no pilot. So turn off the distractions. And I, I think that's keeping a lot of people from going somewhere. All I'm saying is distractions are an excuse for not being focused. And I really want you to find ways. And, and comment in below if you have a great way that you comment. I mean, is your day planned out? Do you have your most important things listed on your list? Do you keep track of all of the needs and wants and requests by everyone and then go over and use the Eisenhower matrix? The Eisenhower matrix is a quadrant for you to put things into that are either you need to do them yourself now, later, delegate them to someone else, or trash them. Not everything on your list is equal, and the most important things should come first, 
the least should come last. I get it. You might claim you have ADD, ADHD. You probably don't. Some people do, and I don't want to discount that. But you probably just have distraction, and smartphones are the problem. We didn't have these problems 10 years ago. It is hard for people to stay off of their devices because they're engineered to keep you on them. They're brilliant people. So work on the distractions. And one more thing underneath this topic that I think is probably a distraction is, uh, and, and, and blame me to some degree if you want to, but the internet forums, the, the Facebook groups, the LinkedIn groups, you, you scroll through them, maybe looking for answers, looking to see what other people are doing. Uh, you might ask questions. I want you to know something. Hard to say here. You're not going to disagree with me, though. Most of what you see on the Internet is not accurate. It is skewed with some type of bias towards uh, what they believe or what they think they know, and therefore they're very eager to tell everyone. They've learned it from someone else, though. The problem is, is we have a bunch of copy and paste where people have learned from someone else. Someone will call and say, hey, this is what I'm doing. It's like, why are you doing that? That is not how that works. Well, I saw someone on the Restoration Rebels or Restoration Nation do that. And I'm like, that doesn't qualify that as being an authentic answer. It's just an answer. Do your homework. But but be logical. It's your business. Um, I call it the, the miss or the disinformation highway. It's not all good information. And now there's so much of it and an abundance of it that you might not be seeing the best. You might not be seeing the real good information from professionals in a certain area. It's the reason that I started up this podcast with telling you about a couple of things that we're doing. Pitching you, selling you, maybe. But if it's not something you're interested in, you don't care. And, and, and I don't want you to be distracted by it. But if you're looking for a retreat, a place to go to, to calm your head, see beautiful places, have a business write off and be around 14 to 16 other restoration professionals and learn one-on-one with, with other people network. It's a great thing to do. If you want, if you don't have time to go to get coaching, if you can't afford a coach, a couple thousand dollars a month, but you want to get great information that's qualified from experienced people who've owned and grew and sold companies, and people who have specialty in things and that really, you know, make it, make things work, the academy might be things for you. Those are the only reasons I'm telling you about them because you probably don't get to see them. Um, you put questions on Facebook and some people, the right people probably aren't seeing them because the right people, the ones that are really with the good answers, they aren't online that much. They're not there seeking answers. They are offline running their business Shut off the distractions, get into your own world, and build your castle. Don't be part of building someone else's, and don't watch other people build their castles. Idea number two around what I think in 2023 is going to be uh, super, super important for you to double down on. Everyone talks about culture in business, and there's a reason, because it is imperative. It's required. It's the first thing you probably need to be working on when you hire people because people want to work in a good culture. I don't care who they are. If you have people that only want to work for a paycheck, they aren't the right people. They have to be aligned with you. And I want to share a case study with you. Um, I'm going to leave out the name of the company um, because obviously, you know, it, it, it's not my intent to make someone look bad. But I want to show you where culture can spoil a, a great company. And you probably know, okay? This is a big disaster restoration company they have 75 to 100 no they probably have 110 employees full-time or full-time part-time between everything they do full service uh 25 to 28 million dollars a year and i did an on-site visit with them uh it's a third generation owner and the the gentleman that owns it now doesn't quite have the business experience that uh, his family had before him that built this great company. 
and he just wanted some help. But um, his idea and belief around building a business is sales. Sell, sell. Money is everything. And I get that. The overhead is very high. The monster needs to eat. That's what I like to say. The, the, the Every day, it's, the rent's due, and you've got to pay the rent. I get it. I am not an ignorant person, and I've, I've coached on you're, you have to build an engine that feeds, but it's got to start with culture because now he's going backwards. A couple of people that I did one-on-ones with there – really built a, a, a great bond and relationship. I didn't end up doing a long-term coaching with this company, but one of them kind of keeps me, you know, I, I, told, I tell everybody, reach out if you need something. Some people never reach out, some do. And I'm glad, I, I don't mind giving, mentoring younger generations at all because that is where the future is going to be. But this gentleman um, is frustrated, and he reached out to me, and he just, you know, probably is hoping I can tell him something that will alleviate the pain, but works very hard, incredible knowledge. He's actually a master restorer, but he's just watching the culture. It's just it's just not good. And, and specifically, uh, we all talked about one of the biggest problems they have in their business is they argue with adjusters. They spend a lot of time trying to get approval and arguing with adjusters, which therefore takes a lot of time. Slow pay, cash flow increases, receivables are high, chokes out the company, puts pressure on everybody else to get the other jobs done. It's just a vicious cycle. And then they ultimately end up settling and negotiating their rates and their prices to go down, and their profit margins shrink. It's a bad idea. They recognized that this was something they wanted to stop doing. We laid out a plan over a four-day period of some first steps to stop doing that. They haven't stopped doing that. And this this person reached out to me and said, we've hired six more estimators just to argue with adjusters. He goes, I feel like we're a PA firm. and um, But what that has to do with culture is he told me, texted me, and said, I don't, know what, I don't know what to think and what's going on. So I said, why don't you talk to Blake, the owner? And, and have a sit down and say, I'm, I'm concerned. I'd like to be clear on why we're not doing what we said we would like to change. But it seems like we're tripling down on that. And he told me, I can't have that conversation with him. He doesn't, he doesn't put up with conversations like that. I was like, really? He says, yeah. He said he doesn't listen to other people. Uh, he knows what needs to be done. But we all have good ideas on how to help, but he doesn't listen. It's really what caused me to come in here and sit down and record this podcast today because that is a culture. A culture for a good company, which you need to build in 2023, is one that anyone can hold audience with another person in the company, a leader or a supervisor or a, a manager, and, and get clarity and better understand the what, the why, the how, when, and have that conversation because if someone's asking, they don't understand. If they're not asking and they're doing something wrong, that means a they don't care. They need to go away. They're a bad hire, bad toxic environment, or b they they don't think they can because maybe you don't express that you really want to hear what everyone else has to say. Everyone on your team collectively that is hired to go the same direction have all the answers on what it takes to make you successful ownership of a company leadership in a company is hard it is hard i will tell you it's hard it's 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 every day i don't care how good you are it's swimming upstream to get more work to respond to customers to stop the mistakes and qc training collections broken equipment broken trucks uh, missed opportunities, marketing events. It's just, you know, for me, creating new services and products, coaching clients, creating a podcast, and we do a blog weekly, creating programs for training, classes that I write out. It's a lot. Why? Because we run very lean so that the team and I all can make the best money we can. Um, we don't charge a whole lot. So those are choices we made, but 
it's it's a lot of work. And without a good culture and everybody on the team that sees someone else struggling and saying, hey, Clark, I see you doing too much of something and I have a little extra time and I actually would like to either A, learn what you're doing and, and take that off your plate. Let me, let me learn how to edit the podcast. Uh, let me do it for you. Um, let's... I can write some topics and outlines for you. I see you doing a lot of research. Tell me what to research. That's a good culture. And that is a team, my team, which is just continuing to improve. It's an uphill, upstream battle every single day. We love it. It's fun. And there's nothing else any of us here want to do. And I hope you can say the same thing in yours. That, my friend, in 2023 or even 2003, has always been the case. Delegate work. Assign whatever it is you do to someone else under you and, and give them a chance to grow and to shine. If they've got too much to do, maybe they need some tools on how to multitask or there's automation, maybe there's software, something you can improve. Or maybe you're just running too lean and you just need a few more people. Can't afford more people, maybe your prices are too low. You're not Your cash flow is too tight. Everything's leading to that. But your culture allows you to lead at your fullest potential and not be a doer and putting out fires all day, but to actually grow the company, see ahead, and maybe even around the corner. I think that's really, really going to help companies in 2023. The last topic, <clears throat> big one, talk about it all the time, and I want you to at least listen to what I say. If, if you know me or follow me, you've heard this a lot of times. If it's the first time you've he heard it. You're probably going to nod your head, but you're like, how can we actually do this? Focus on your customer, whether that's a homeowner, whether that's a business owner. Focus on your customer and not the carrier, not the third party, not the, the person. Who signed your contract? Who are you making an obligation and promise to? Um, who is going to be the one that's going to tell others in the market and community about you? Who are the other ones that are going to feel compelled to be your cheerleader? I watch far, far, far too many restoration companies for the last six years continue to spend time, money, energy, dealing with insurance companies, trying to collect their money, taking them to appraisal. Uh, sending, you can't send an insurance company to collections. You have a customer. They are the ones that owe you. I understand all of the complexities. They don't have the money to pay you. They have to get it from their insurance company. That's their problem. Oh, but they're 90 years old. That's their problem. I, I have empathy. I do. Uh, that's why I do... That's why I was a contractor in restoration, owned my own companies. We served customers. They loved us, reviewed referrals. But I made it clear that we were a business. Uh, uh, think of yourself as a doctor and EMT. Doctors, they just do what they do and invoice the job. What the insurance pays or doesn't pay, that's it. They're going to invoice the customer for the difference. Plumbers, HVAC companies, uh, parking lot paving companies, pool repair, landscape. This is the work. This is how I stay in business. I'm a small business in this community, and we're going to invoice you, and we've got to get paid. Now, that's back to our onboarding. How do we get a customer to pay when they don't have the money? Those are different sets of questions. But here's the, the big answer. If you don't clarify who's going to pay you and when in the beginning of a project that you're starting, you're, you're walking into it ignorant. But spending your time arguing with the insurance company is a race to the bottom, and I'll tell you why. Number one, right behind me on the shelf here, Delay to Not Defend. You can't see the book because of the focus of the camera. Delay to Not Defend tells you that it's a game and they want you to play it. They are insurance adjusters or whoever they are, claim specialists, probably not even adjusters, have no problem going back and forth with you on the stupidest, dumbest things. Their stances don't usually have any support from any kind of best practices or standards. Many of them, most of them now, 
have never run a business, have never stepped foot on a restoration project, and have certainly not been to this project and looked at the complexities. If you put together the right scope, the right documentation, and invoice the correct way, there's no argument. But I watch so many people spend so much time. Time that's not recoverable. Time is your profit going away. Because your time could be spent back on the first area, the distractions and building the company and training and helping grow, finding the right kind of customers, onboarding your customers. I know it's counterintuitive, and when I talk to people and they, they, they just live by fighting, I ask, where, where did you learn that? That's just the way our industry has always done it. You and I both know that's the worst sentence to use for a business. We do this because that's the way it's always been done. You need to get it tattooed across your neck that we don't do it like we've always done it. Adapt and change. Observe, investigate, discuss, solve, move forward. Don't do it. But Clark, my cash flow, I get all the symptoms, but the symptoms are from a bigger source. Solve the problem, peel the onion, get to the bottom. But it's only gotten worse. Carriers know. They don't care. They, they know that you don't want to charge your customer for whatever difference is from the ridiculous number they think they're going to settle on. We only pay for this. That's fine. I have no control over what Allstate, State Farm, USA want to pay that day. It's different from adjuster to adjuster because you probably have been paid for some of the things that you're invoiced for by that same carrier on different jobs. But you have an adjuster who just has a set of beliefs or a training or ignorance, and they're going to stall you. Don't let that get in your way. They're not your, they're not your circus. They're not your monkeys. Just tell the client, I don't deal with insurance companies. They're, they're ridiculous. They're not professionals. There's only one professional on these jobs that does the work that you do usually, and it's you. Everyone else that wants a piece of the pie it's all driven from profit only, not justification. Now, if they are chopping you up because you're not doing the right industry standards and best practices based on the ICRC or whatever institute you've got certifications from, that's warranted. But shame on you for having to let a, an insurance adjuster tell you what you need to do. Why do they know better than you do? That's why you go to classes. That's why you learn to get better. Join RBA. Let us help you build a company that doesn't do this. Or don't join RBA. Do something. Don't continue. Because what this does is it continues to devalue our industry and our professionalism. We want to be seen as an, a, an actual trade, as a licensed position of skilled professionals that we charge what we charge. The, the gen, generally, the prices are too low for what we do. Don't argue with adjusters. Don't argue with TPAs. If you are on programs and you're locked in with the SLA service level agreement, you obviously can't do. You can't change that. You, you and there's probably nothing to argue about. <laughs> um, the goal would be to leave those because they are limiting, and 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 there are there are companies, individuals, and there are whole entire franchises that have built their businesses around. Courting and servicing insurance companies. Those people contact me and other resources all the time. This is awful. It's killing me. How do I get away? You have to stop and you have to market and get your own leads and get your own work and play the game, digital marketing. But that's how I think for the third thing that you need to stop doing in 23. There are a hundred other things that you could do. But if you just take those three things that I just talked about, if you would shut off distractions and become super focused, read a book, take an online course, hire a coach, set up a, a mastermind with some other local businesses around you, they don't have to do the same thing. Or if they do, great. Get together once a month. Sit down. Talk about problems and wins and struggles. Learn how other people overcome stuff. That's a better use of your time. Secondly, culture improve the culture of your company make it a place where not only the people that are there love to come in love to work there it's a job it's not the, their favorite place 
but it's not misery. And then a place where others are actually attracted to come work. And then third, stop playing the insurance fight game. I know you like to win. Sometimes it's just a matter of I'm not going to I'm going to beat these guys. I'm going to show them how wrong they are. They don't care how wrong they are. I just want to see restorers that give a damn do good work. Uh, my podcast is built around helping small to medium-sized companies. I'm going to give you the information, nothing required from it. I hope you enjoyed this podcast. I hope you will tune in and check out the others if you haven't and uh, reach out to us at restorationadvisors.com. But more importantly, join today and try us out. Just come in and check out what you can get for under $100 a month at Restoration Business Academy. It's going to be epic. It's good now. It's only going to improve, and that's going to be with your feedback. Tell us what you want to learn. Tell us what we can do in there to enrich that environment. Thanks for listening. I appreciate you. Have a great, great, great week, better than great week. And let us know what you need, but just keep going, stay strong, and we'll talk soon.